gentlemen, welcome to TFI Tattoo Embroidery Crafting Tips. <laughs> what is this? Why have I got a, Why have I got this on screen? Right, this is a Celtic band, Celtic Rope. All right, and the question was up on the Autodesk forums a couple of days ago from somebody saying, how do I model Celtic Rope? So I answered it along with a couple of other people. And I thought, ah, that's tutorial worthy. It is, because it's a quite a complex object. And I thought, eh. it's not so much about what this is, right? Inventors, product designs, manufacturing. You're never really going to want to model a Celtic band, right? Unless you're physically modeling your next tattoo for some screwed up reason. So it's not about what we're modeling. It's the techniques that we're going to be using to get there. That's what this is all about, right? And you're probably thinking, well, you're probably going to be doing like 3D sketching. This is going to be really complex and that. And, oh, splines and 3D sketches. No, no 3D sketches involved, right? We're just going to do it. And we'll just follow me and we'll get there. Okay, throughout the course of the tutorial, somebody's bound to ask, right? Somebody's bound to ask. I use 3D Connection CAD mouse in my right hand, and in my left hand is the 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro. Those are my tools of choice. That's how I roll. So go and check those out if you like them. I highly recommend them. I've been meaning to do a video on this thing, actually, but it's, uh, it's just one of those things where like everybody knows they exist. Uh, but I'm, I'll get around to doing a dedicated video on this at some point soon. Right, okay, let's get cracking. So I'm going to keep this as, as sort of straight the point as possible. So we're going to go straight in with a new part, new empty part file. Then we're going to start a new sketch on the XY plane. That'll be this one here. And then we're going to look straight front on. So we're looking straight down on the sketch. Okay. The sizes that we're going to be using in this tutorial don't matter, right? Because this thing doesn't exist. So there's no, there's no sizes. As long as everything's relative to itself and in proportion, that's all that matters. So we're going to start with a circle and then we're going to snap to the center of the part. Always snap to the center of the part. If you're doing something circular, square, rectangular, always snap. Don't draw up here. Don't draw up here. Always snap to the center of the part and then pull out like that. Okay, so because the sizes don't matter, let's just go for 100 mil. And then the next thing we're going to do in this sketch is create a point. And the point is just, the, the whole point of the, the whole point of the point is for it to be, it's just construction geometry, which is going to be used later on. It serves no purpose right now, but it will be used later on. And then the point is going to be snapped to the circle. So just make sure you click on the circle, right click and OK. Hold the left mouse button down on the point and it should just sort of rotate around the edge of the circle like that. It should stick to the circle because it's coincidentally constrained to it. And then, then what we're going to do is we need to put the point sort of exactly in line. So on the quadrant, horizontally, horizontally aligned to the center of the part. So we click the horizontal constraint and then we click the, the, the point and then the center of the circle. And that should, uh, it sort of disappears, it vanishes into, into there, but it's there, it's there. Right, if your point, just out of interest, if your points are like tiny and the, you're struggling to see them, the, the size of the points are controlled by the annotation scale of Inventor. So if you've got your application options, uh, it's uh, this and this set in here annotation scale by default that's set to one and everything's just a little bit too small and that also controls the size of the dimensions as well so like if I make that two everything sort of increases in size so it's a personal preference it makes no difference you can't see these undrawns or anything like that so it's uh, it's up to you what you set that as so I'll leave it at two but that makes the points a bit bigger as well right then we're going to finish the sketch and then, and then, right, we're going to create a work plane, right? I, I could explain, like, literally the theory behind everything that I'm doing here, but the video would just go on for ages. So instead, we're just, I'm just going to do it. You can follow me, and you can sort of pass it as you go through. So we're going to click work plane. Don't use these things here. I hate these so much, right? These are for, I guess, for beginners who are trying to self-teach themselves. But that's fair enough. Just don't, if you can avoid using these, just don't use these because they restrict your le the learning curve with work planes and work features. Just so try and avoid using these if possible. So we're just going to select plane and then we're going to select the point and then we're going to select the circle. Now what this does is this puts a work plane into our part which intersects the point but it's going to be normal to the circle, right? So wherever that point is on the circle, the work plane is going to be kind of normal, perpendicular to the circle itself. And then that allows us to create a sketch on this work plane and then we're going to draw a line coming out of here. And you probably think, where are you going with this, you silly Englishman, man? What are you doing? Bear with me, bear with me. It will all make sense in a bit. And then we're going to use project geometry. And we're going to project that point through onto this sketch. And that gives us a, a snap point for us to draw a line from there. So just click on it when the dot goes green. And again, increasing that annotation scale makes the green dot bigger. It just makes things a little bit easier on the eye. So click there and then move out. Make sure you snap it at the horizontal so you can see there where the, little, the constraint glyph appears just below the cursor. All right, make sure that's there. And then type in, oh, I don't know, five mil. Yeah, I'll do five mil. So we've got a line there coming out from the circle. It's 
a sub -air. It's, yeah it is it's snapped to the circle isn't it it's constrained to the circle because we use that point and then we've got our five mil line and finish the sketch i'm done with this work plane so you can right click on him and turn the visibility off and we're done right the next thing we're going to do is sweep right we're going to go for a sweep now this is where inventor becomes a little bit presumptuous right it's it's trying to be helpful but in fact it's just not it's, it's making things a little bit difficult so because we've got a circle which is a closed profile and we've got a line which is in theory a path inventor inventor be all like oh look bro you've got a path you've got, you've got a profile you've got a path i'm going to automatically select them for you and i uh doing your favor man yeah where's my thanks and you're like no man no it's not it's not what i was wanting come on so we've got to undo you've got no choice you've got to undo what it's just done so we click this button here for surface and then for path because it's now got path selected hold down shift and then deselect the path right and then select profile and then hold down shift and deselect that so we're just it, what we're doing is actually the complete opposite of everything the sweep command is automatically assumed we're going to do so now we're going to make sure the surface button's picked which it is select profile the profile is actually the line and the path is actually the circle and that's going to create like a satin ring effect it's going to sweep the line around the circle like that that's what we were going for but inventor just didn't have a clue right well because we're, we're beating the system and we're, we're ahead of it yeah we know better and then we're going to put a twist in right the twist is based on degrees so if you type in 360 the line will spin around the circle once around the full circle if that makes sense so that's one spin as it's being swept around the circle if you put in 720 that's going to be two spins as it goes around the circle 3600 is 10 spins 7200 is 20 spins that'll do I think that'll do right we'll put in 20 spins as it goes around and it's not looking that's looking dapper that isn't it? that's looking pretty tasty quite happy with that and then click okay and then what that does is it gives you a surface it's a swept surface around the circle which is starting to look like a coil now if you think well surely there's a command straight away that just does this automatically there's not there is a coil command but that just makes a coil in a straight line there's not much else you, you can't do that you can't do this with that coil command so this is really one of the only options we've got for doing this right and then we've got this split line you see this here that's the split line that's where the sweep starts and ends right and we need to work with this region here so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another work plane and this work plane is in a similar it's going to be created in a similar way to the last one we made so we're going to make work plane snap to the end point of that line there right that one there click that and then click the the edge of this surface right you see it's got like this sort of outer rim this lip here right you want to click that and then that creates a work plane intersecting that point normal to that edge of the surface right and that's now now inventor starts to look a bit complicated and you're like whoa it's a bit hypnotic you're looking through it and you're like whoa i don't know where i'm looking at it i don't know which angle i'm looking at it but you just try and keep the camera sort of steady at this point because if you if you move the camera around you might lose focus of where you're looking at and what you're looking at then we're going to do another 2d sketch on this work plane similar similar routine to last time project geometry project the center there and then we're going to draw a circle snapped to that point and again sizes i mean i don't know i don't know what size is working with your two mil is that is that about yeah two mils probably fine i'll do right click and okay right right click on that work plane and then get rid of that one we're done with him finish the sketch and we're done we're almost done then we're going to do another sweep right this time inventors like ah, i have no idea what you're doing <laughs> inventors lost track of what we're doing here as well so the profile is going to be the circle it automatically picks that up because it is the only closed profile that we have here the only closed sketch profile the path is going to be the edge of that surface and then boom look at that look at that that is looking delicious and then we're going to click ok straight away no sweeps uh, no twists no nothing like that we don't need anything like that and then we can right click on that surface and get rid of it that surface has served its purpose and then we're left with a uh, circular coil which is looking pretty dapper and then because the celtic rope is it's sort of two two coils weaved to around themselves type thing right we need to do that how do we do that we're going to do this all again no of course we're not no what we're going to do is do a circular pattern pick your coil the center line uh, let me dial the boxes off screen uh, the center line the rotation axis will be the z axis and that was one of the benefits of making sure our first circle was uh, to the center of the part because the z axis is the center line of the coil so the center line is going to be that z axis and then we want two you can have more if you want but i'm going to say two and then uh, 45 degrees right okay and then boom look at that 
There you go. There's your Celtic band. Right, so what we've done here doesn't actually matter, right? This thing here, where are you ever going to use this, right? I mean, you, like heat exchanger coils, sp you know, bent springs, stuff like that. Yeah, you can use those. You can use this technique for that, but Celtic band, where well, it's invented, you're never going to be doing a Celtic band. And then once that's done, if you want to just sort of sit back and marvel at your work, you can turn on your shadows. Uh, yeah, it's sort of on its arse, isn't it? So let's put the, the shadow on the ground. So what you do is you click the front of the cube like that, and then you say, make set the current view as front. And then that puts the shadows on the floor. Uh, make a perspective. And then you're like, yes, look at that. Look at what I have created. I have created a 3D tattoo. <laughs> uh, that'll do. Right, there you go. That's how you do a Celtic band or a coil, I guess, a circular coil. All right, that'll do. Right, over the next week, right, just FYI, over the next week, there's going to be very little coming out of this channel because Inventor 2017 is going to be landing in a week's time-ish. So over the next week, I'm going to be creating some videos on Inventor 2017 ready for launch day. And I am extraordinarily excited because Inventor 2017 is looking flipping awesome, man. It's looking amazing. There's some awesome stuff in there. It's quality. So I'm going to be getting some videos ready for launch day. And uh, whilst that's happening, I'm not going to be doing much else. So uh, this is your lot for then. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>